Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this Kenmore washer. The model number is on the display and this Kenmore is made by Whirlpool. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. The complaint that we have with this washer is that it's off balance or it's shaking a lot. If you want to see how to put this washer on test mode, go ahead and go to the end of this video and it will show you step by step how to put the washer in test mode. But if your washer is just banging and shaking a lot, you have to do this test. Push the drum down from the agitator and if it bounces more than once, that means the shocks needs to be replaced. Shocks or springs or a so absorber shocks, that's what they call it. So as you can see, when I push it down, the top and the drum bounce more than once and that's an indication that it needs new shocks. And as you can see right there, I'm removing that cover and the three screws in the back to be able to release the top panel and as you can see right there i push it towards the front and lift up a little bit to release it from that clamp and this clamp right here they're like a hooks so raise it up a little then push back and it will release it from another hooks and then it will when you lift it up it's supposed to go right there in that um, space right there so after you release the top cover just watch the video a couple times and see how I did it. Once you remove the three screws in the back and get it up, just put a piece of tape. You can use duct tape, clear tape, any kind of tape to hold that door in place because otherwise it will bounce on you. So make sure you put that tape on the uh, lid. Now, this is how I remove the first shock. Just use your hand or vice grips to remove the first one be careful use long sleeve to be um, to do this repair because those are sharp edges now i do this all the time so i know how to get around it and without getting myself hurt so um right there my vice scripts got stuck so i'm just releasing it with my um, channel locks but this will not be your scenario if you do it the right way i just adjust my vice grips too tight because really they need to be tight that way it doesn't um, come loose when you are taking the springs up now i find a better way to do this shocks replacement not too long ago that's why I didn't got it in this video, but I'm going to go ahead and try to explain it to you in this picture. Just put something on the bottom of the washer that it will make to raise this part up. So when you get to the top, the whole top and drum will be raised up and it will be getting all four shocks loose. Easy for you to grab it with your hand and remove it. You don't need to use the vice grips and get hurt or anything like that. I find that out not too long ago. That's why I don't have it in this video. But I wanted to share with you guys because that will be the safest way to do it. However, I came up with a part two in case you are a technician and you want to do this in and out. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you later on in this video. Now I'm doing the second one. And as you can see, if it's not slippery, you can just use your hand. You don't need to use a vice grips or anything. Just make sure you don't put your finger right there. Never put the finger and the hook in front of the hook. Try to be around the hook, not in front of the hook that you saw right there. Now this is how i remove this black plastic piece and as you can see once you do that you can put your finger underneath but one time i cut myself in that round that's like a knife that's very sharp so when i was doing this repair um for the first time or the second time i cut my finger there and that's how you learn how to be precaution for the other repairs so this is the new shocks and there's the part number so you can see right there let me focus for you you can find this part in the description of this video to be able to do this repair you might have two links 
one for the aftermarket and one for the OEM. I always recommend OEMs, but sometimes the aftermarket are more affordable. So as you see, I removed the two in the front first, and then I, I lean the washer to the back to be able to access underneath, and that's how you remove it. Um, and that's how you install the new ones, same way. So this is removing the old one. This is the one on the left. So you can see. And now we're going to go ahead and install the new ones. Let's put the old ones to the side and grab the new ones that I got it. Um, I got it out of the box. Now, once you put it through that hole, there's like a plastic ring on it. You're going to use the ring just to hold it in place until you get the washer down and go through the top and put them um, in the hook. So just use the little plastic to keep them in place because otherwise they're going to be hit on the floor. And I really believe that, I don't know if that's what the, real, uh, the round plastic piece is for, but... It's pretty handy to keep them in place. Now go ahead and remove the drain because it's going to be tight if you don't and disconnect the washer. Uh, at this point, I should have done disconnecting this washer at the beginning, but I forgot. I suggest you guys to go ahead and disconnect it when you start, before you start working on it. Now this drain hose, just try to keep it um, raised up uh, what I do is I just you know grab the uh, the extension cord from the washer and try to you know tighten it around there on the top because if you let it go to the floor it's going to be water all over the place now I'm checking the water hose and I always leave those water hose connected to be able to do this repair because sometimes when you start messing with those water hoses um, they start leaking and then you have to replace them and sometimes they corrode it and then you have another issue So I leave them on but one of them started leaking. So I take care of that issue in This washer so I replaced the Water hose. I just didn't got it on the video because I had to come back to do it But that's just something to keep in mind if if you got long on um, water hoses and you can do it with the water hoses on just trying to be careful now, let me tell you a little bit about this part that you see on my hands. I came up with this part because when I started doing this repair, I find out that it was kind of dangerous, especially for the sharp edges and the fact that you have to put a vice grips underneath. However, I find out as well that putting something underneath to raise the top up works out even better. But if you're a technician and you want to be in and out, I recommend to use this tool. And this is where this tool becomes very handy because you can grab the shocks put it through the hole very safe and then put the new plastic piece then once you got it there just make sure it's in this spot or this spot don't put in any of this because you can tell where it should be it was either this side or this side and just go like this and it should fall in place it works beautiful if you guys looking to buy one of these let me know in the comments and i will send you a link or i will put a link in the description of the video look how it works Put it through boom again this is beautiful guys let me know if you guys need one of this another option is to use the old shock once you remove the first one you will find that the shock has a hook similar the the tool that i'm showing to you in the picture so you can just reuse the old shock to remove the rest of the shocks otherwise uh, this tool I might put a link in the description of the video So to remove it 
you basically have to do the same look this is all you gotta do remove the old one put it through and release it now let's do this one remember to use gloves if you don't have any gloves use a piece of rag push it through because if you use a finger you can cut yourself right there this is like a knife right here I'm gonna go ahead and show you one more time. This is how it is when you remove the three screws from the back, you push it to the front, then you will release it from these two hooks, one, two. Then you're gonna push it back to release it from this hook and this hook. Then you can open it. I'm just gonna put it down because I need to do the two and the back. Now you gotta be careful with the water hoses. You have somebody to hold it for you right there. Oh. This is the way I do things. Well, I either have somebody to hold it for me or I put stuff the way it leans. On the other side, you can do the two in that side as well. It depends on the space that you have and do the two on that side and then the two on this side and just work it out i just don't like to complicate myself because as you can see right now i'm pulling this hose and you see it's leaking so when you start messing with something else you might create another issue so we're going to find out what's going on with that in a minute so Now, I'm going to remove this one.
We're gonna use the magical tool again. This is the magical tool. See how I'm grabbing it. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the test. We're gonna go ahead and press the drum down. And as you can see, it only bounced once. That means everything is fine now because it has the new shocks. As you see, this ring is broken here. This is another indication that the washer is being off balance and it needs the new shocks. Once you want to put it back, just make sure you get this hook and this hook in, and then put forward, I mean towards you, and then back. Now, as you see, I'm adjusting the legs because I want to make sure the cabinet is not touching the floor because that will make the washer go off balance as well. So go ahead and raise all four legs up and balance the legs on the washer. Make sure it's not rocking because that can get the washer to be off balance as well. Now we're going to go ahead and untie the drain hose and put it back in place. That way it drains properly and we're going to go ahead and plug in the washer. Now we're going to begin to do the test mode and I'm going to leave you the original audio. If you guys want to do a test mode, I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to go um, one, two, three, one back, one forward and all the lights should come on. One, two, three, one back, one forward. All the lights should come on. So let's go, um, let's say 360, I believe, 360 uh, counterclockwise. And then one, two, three, one back, one forward. One, two, three, one back, one forward. See? Sometimes it's going to take more than once for you to get to it because you need to do it at exact time. Now, then you're going to go one. That's to check if you have any codes. Two, this is automatic test mode, which I don't like to do automatic test mode because it goes to every step, every test. It tests the water valves, it tests uh, agitation, speed, drain pump, but uh, it does it automatically. You go one more, which is the third one, and that's manual test mode. So you can enter to the test mode by pressing that. All the lights should be off. That means we already in the uh, manual test mode. And if you press it again, it's gonna test 
the uh, door lock. As you see right there, door lock. We go one more, cold water. Stopped, you know, press it again to stop the, the test. Press it, and then this is the um, hot water. Press it to stop. This is nothing, it flashes like that. It's nothing. If you see it flashes three times, nothing. 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 Here should be the drain pump. Right. Here should be nothing. Over here should be the spin cycle. You know, hear like clicking noise, and it should go to the spin cycle. There we go. You can hear it spinning. This will be high spin. We already know spinning, so it's fine. And this is the um, agitation. So when you, you press it, when you press it, it will flash like that, but the drum have to stop spinning. That way it changes to agitation. So we gotta wait until it stops spinning. Now I can hear where the drum is about to stop and then it's gonna make another clicking noise which that should be the actuator. And it's gonna begin doing the um, agitation. I already can hear the actuator making those clicking noises. And you can hear this. That's a low agitation, and this is high agitation. All right, if you do one more, it should unlock the door. And then if you press it for like three, five seconds, it should get out of the every test mode. Yep. Just press it, hold it three seconds every time you want to cancel the cycle. And that's it. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.